It's the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> Hi, you guys. We can explain a couple of things right off the bat, right? Okay, right. so yep. there's a logo behind me, but you can't read it all. And we got a guest today <laughs> that we, we put in. Uh, you're not getting the end of summer episode till next week. We're working a little hard on that. And we heard from a friend of ours uh, uh, to come on our podcast. We've got a little thing we're going to promote with him. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's Yeah, it's very pop, special. Pop culture. Not pop culture. Pop culture. Rescue. Pop anyway, culture. <laughs> and what is the name of our guest? Paul. That's a clue. <laughs> Paul. Hey, Paul, you tell him. <laughs> what, what Pauls do you know? You know, Paul Cowsill. Paul McCartney. You know. He's unlikely. Paul McCartney. <laughs> what other Pauls do we know? Not that Paul. No. How about how about um, how, how about Paul Schaefer? Ding, 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 ding. Susan gave it, it away. Susan. Gave it Are, away? What, were they going to guess and call us? No, 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 no. I was having Paul say who it was because he's Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. But look. This is trying to Paul. show us something. Uh, audio people, just bear with this. Now she's disappeared. <laughs> she was trying to show us, so it didn't work. Um, but we're going to have Paul Schaefer on later. It's awesome. We'll talk about a little night coming down in Studio City, California, February 13th, next Wednesday. February. September. And welcome back. We're done. We are man, here. Oh, man, oh, man. Let's take let's each take just sent a few sentences on recovery. So here's what happens. I get home and the first night in bed, it's like it's super claustrophobic. It's like it's we have unusual humidity in California. And I had to absolutely get up. Like I get out of the berth and go to the tea room. Like I go to the lounge and open the door. Like I need fresh air and I'm freaking out a little and my legs are busy and I'm going, dude, calm down. <laughs> and, but it has always taken me and I'm not exaggerating the month of September to get over the happy together tour in terms of getting everything back to normal. My legs don't hurt. That's what I go through. I have a Susan. matching. I have a slightly matching story. It's kind of it's a little embarrassing, but and like remember the insomniac part. So like I get home right, and I get home at like ten at night, and Russ is still at a gig. He's not coming in till midnight, right? So that that night kind of happens, and I, I don't really sleep because it's just so still. It's like when you go to the hotel room off the bus and everything's yes, just still. dead, caught and silent. Nothing okay, moved. but here's one of the things. So, but like we went about our night, we're gonna watch Outlander, right? And make some, heat up some food, babe. What do you want? Anything you want. I had roses, flowers. It was amazing coming home. But so I, I'm in the kitchen and, and I hear beep, beep, beep. And I go to the microwave and I see in the microwave, and I know we've been talking about it, me and Russ, but in the microwave is a plate with a thing on top. And for two seconds, I go, oh my God, it's the other, it's last night's dinner. It was the last thing I put in to our microwave oh, on the bus. On the bus. <laughs> and Russ goes, babe, I just, we're heating up dinner. I went, dude, <laughs> I was like two seconds. I was on the bus and this was that microwave. I must have God. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm home. We're heating this up. I'm eating here. So like yeah. a party is still there. Party is set. it's crazy. Crazy. Go, Polly. Crazy. Well, I had the great, great ability of, of flying into Redmond, which is, you know, like an hour away instead of the four and a half hours waiting for a bus to take me home. And that was awesome. Got home. Wolfie was like crazy. Because Luann had already left the day before I got home, so he'd been uh, he'd been alone for a day, wondering what was happening. I came in, we threw the ball, and then came back in the house. And what was I doing? I was gonna see. Oh, it was uh, college football. I was all about <laughs> college football, and I never saw one minute of college football. I fell asleep in that chair, and I woke <laughs> up way later, yeah. crawled into bed. Well, took Wolfie out again. And then crawled into bed, got up, did a few things, the chores, feeding the horse, feeding everybody, and then came back into the house. And I thought, you know, I can watch those games now because I can stream them again, you know, because they're always up. And I slept all the way through them all again. I have no idea who won <laughs> anything. Hey, listen, I, uh, I, have, I have days of I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm awake, I'm asleep. You yeah. just on and off like a faucet till you recover or something. Yeah, was, that was it. I was so sore when I woke up 
uh, oh God. that first day. But, you know, I felt good when I woke up today, mm -hmm. got out, you know, and mowed the lawn and yard and did all that kind of stuff. And fortunately, I had to go get Luann because I do believe it was going to be another thing where I was going to set up TV, get it all going and then fade away. Now, you okay, listeners so out there, if I could just project a quick thought so you can look forward to something. You people that like the HGTV and the flip the house and the do this and the buy it and make it better and make money. Paul's going to take us through this autumn on a bathroom redo at his house. And we're going to show you. We're going to take you yep. through it. Kind of what yep. it's, it's interesting. I couldn't do it. I'd call it's him to do it. All walks of life. Yeah. I, all walks of life. So you yeah, All walks of life. Yeah. yeah. And we'll get to see Dean. That'll a little fun. bathroom redo uh, from Paul Council. We wanted we must be amazing. Here at the deck. Now we went through this with Paul. He built a deck, and he did this with us. But so, we didn't have a podcaster. You all would have been exactly, involved. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. You know. So um, the bathroom will be fun. I got a meeting on uh, the eleventh with the Kohler the guy. They <laughs> they have this kind of cool thing where they just come in. You don't have to put green drywall up and they have this kind of like a mesh that goes around all the studs and then they slap this thing in. And I just got to make sure that, you know, that they're going to work with me. I don't know if they want to do all the demo and then do all the plumbing, you know, and I'll, I'll listen to that. But, you know, hopefully they're just going to supply the shower installation so I can have everything clean and demoed out. And then they come in and it's, it should be just a few hours, oh, you know, have all the plumbing up, the new plumbing in the wall. And me and Dean will get that in. And uh, hopefully it goes smooth because, you know, okay. we only have the one shower upstairs. And then if you want to get clean and you don't want to do like the army cleanup where you just scrub down with a cloth, you have to take a tub. <laughs> there's a little bit of, 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 of a little bit hint at the excitement that's coming uh, from yeah. Paul. And if out of Madras, Oregon, this autumn, oh, make sure you, you stay it's tuned. It's going to be for, stressful for that. Um, we're already missing our happy together family, of course. You know, course. you miss them immediately. But we got to tell you, we we we're on the bus. You spend three months together. You bond. You're tight. You. <laughs> I remember when we first started. At the end, you're looking for the the goodbye dinner, or you're looking for the like. Well, what do we do? I'll get together and say goodbye at the end, and have a little powwow. No. Or as Paul told me that did you tell how did Ron Housefeld put it, Paul? Was it you who told me you, you you get on the you get in your hotel room, you get on the airplane, and you go home. Yes. Yeah. yes. And it's not like crying and like everyone's just like it's like we got shot out of slingshots, man. It's weird. You know, it's and it's go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say it's funny because if you in that last day, there's a lot of opportunities to say goodbye to everybody. But, you know, you, you're kind of in the day and you're just trying to get it done. You're trying to think about packing. There's a lot going on in your head. And so, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I had a major, just an Irish goodbye. I don't recall even saying goodbye to Jason, who was on the bus. I'm sure we just went, hey, see you later. Rah, 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 rah. I actually we were gone. Went, I went on the bus and said goodbye to Jay and Mark and Ron because before they split. Oh, over yeah, on that bus, cool. I kind of started that kind of stuff two days ahead of time because we're veterans now. <laughs> hey, right. I'm, and I always said, look, it's going to get chaotic tomorrow. I always said that it's going to yeah. get chaotic tomorrow. If, I, if we lose touch. And, and a bunch of them went out. Thank um, you so much. You know, a bunch of them went out that night um, across the street. There was a place about 800 feet from our hotel because I walked Ray down well, and the boys came and got her. And they all went and, and toasted each other before, before departing. You know, there's always I think there's a subset that gets together. We're just old and unfun. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was funny. I When I looked at my phone later on, actually at home, I hadn't looked at it. And it was uh, obviously I don't have these people in my registry. So it was just all these numbers, yeah, phone, uh, numbers. phone numbers after phone number. And everybody's going, are we meeting in the lobby? Are we doing this? And I'm thinking, God, who are these people? And they got that kind of energy to continue on in, in this night. Me and Bob, we literally had to we didn't even get to sleep really we had to be oh, out of there at like 4 30 and so i there was no reason to go out <laughs> you know all these pulse right all these messages which remind me of jc our, our our sound guy that goes with us to our gigs you know jc uh one time he went through all that and he said and his response is 
please remove me from this list because <laughs> everybody's yeah. answering. But it's a list of all of our mates <laughs> sending each other, hey, I made it home, safe, it's safe awesome. travels, great summer, see you next year. They're loving texts. Yeah. But if you're not a guy who wants to hear your phone, ping, 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 and ping, ping, <laughs> ping, ping, then you yeah. want out of all that. Well, love. you could be the guy. All right, you're home. Okay, you're home too. Great. Oh, you're home. Great. <laughs> all right, we're home. Then you yeah, feel yeah. obligated to say you're home. <laughs> hey, I mean, um, oh, we got to talk about our gigs. Hey, dates, because Mr. Schaefer might just show up any second. Oh, He'd be okay. early. But. Well, there's an, an interesting question which is kind of relevant to what we're doing now and what we're about to go through. There was a question at info at council.com info at council.com people. You can contact us. there. That's where it happens. Peeps. Um, it was now that the happy together tour is over. What's it like going from singing five, the same five songs every night to a, a 90 minute longer show. Oh, so they want to see if there's any issues there, I guess. So I don't know. Anyone want to start? It's a dream come true, actually. You know, we're we're pretty much stifled on the Happy Together tour. We went out there initially and we thought we had some real good banter going on. And then we did our first show and we got a big, big, we got laughs and applause and we came off the stage and and then our Ronnie boss. was, <laughs> our boss called me into his office and he goes, hey, stop all the talking, just do your songs. <laughs> and so we, and we literally took that literally yeah. and we never said much the whole rest of the summer. So it's going to be nice to yeah. get to Vegas, to do our long show. We're going to put some rhythm of the world songs in, which is going to be so much fun, but we can take our time. Yeah, Polly and, to I this. Were, Polly and I were talking a lot about how the HTT set, short as it might be five little songs but you hit the ground running on 150 and so you are in high palpitation from the second you arrive to the second you leave and there's and you're and you're just you're there to just entertain them as much as you can in that really tiny space when you're in a right. show council show you're kind of just more you and you're just like moseying out there hey what's up how's everybody doing yeah all right maybe crack your knuckles kick sip and go let's rock and then you uh, move yeah. up to and then by the end you're whoa, 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 where you come on at hd and if you if you're questioning um and this is part of it, if you if you're kind of thinking well five songs but now you got to do like 20 songs you got to do an hour and a half but remember we're not solo artists, okay? We're all, there's a song in the show, my one of my favorite songs, other than the fact she does it so great, is To Serve With Love, because when To Serve With Love comes, I know I can take three steps back and strum the guitar for three minutes. That's all I'm going to do, okay, as she takes over. So we are not solely responsible for 90 minutes. It spreads out, and it's just more relaxed. You're right. I, I And I think the long show is an easier show to do than this five-song set because – all those songs are in a row and they're, you know, they're right. At, they're all in the same keys. They're at our peak, you know, and uh, when you get into the real show, there's a lot of songs, you know, especially when we do Rhythm of the World, they're right where they belong in our key. You know, I mean, they're easy to sing and it's all great. And most everything is easy to sing except those five hits. And so we get to push them all through the show and, and we take one, but then we can, you know, it, it's just easier to do the longer show. <laughs> and and if we actually wanted to or needed to, unlike HTT, we could go, can we all just hold on a second? Everybody just take a deep breath. I got any questions. I mean, we can yeah. really go, we need to cool it for a minute here. What are y'all doing? You know, it's just a much more interactive kind of really personal or evening mm -hmm. as opposed totally. to pow, 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 hit you over the head because... That's how we're rolling. Because we there's another band coming on right after right. you. And you we know, have to be off that stage. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah, yeah. Very different. So that's your big question. And um, speaking, and speaking of that intimate experience and that different kind of audience at the whole show, we'll take you through. Well, our first show is coming up. Look, Friday we're in Las Vegas, guys. You're going to hear this tomorrow night. This episode's going up. So this Friday, get in your cars or your planes. Come to Vegas. We're at the Golden Nugget on Friday the eighth. And um, it's coming right at us. Okay. Yep. September 8th. And that show we're talking about, we're going to enjoy doing for the first time since the Happy Together Tour. Yeah, it's going to be super fun. 
It's gonna be cool. And there's been a million people that go, well, you know, we don't like this short show. We don't like this short show. Well, then go come to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't flight. tell us how you hate these short shows and not come to a long show. <laughs> We're making them. We can't make them at your house. You know, we would have. Right, right. Full, full meet and greet in force, folks. Full meet and greet. Show, as long as you're there. We're there. We're going to have yep. albums. We're going to have CDs, pictures. Though. You know what we have. Except this yep. will be our first time, I think, with the Rhythm of the World vinyl album that you'll be able to get. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be there so in force and have a good time. And then October 6th, a month later, a little less than a month later, we're yep. hopping the plane to Boston, playing Arlington, Massachusetts at the Regent Theater, Friday, October 6th. Come on, New Englanders, Newportians, Middletowners, Portsmouthians. Come on, all you St. Augustine second yeah. graders. This is Andy Gustin, second yeah. graders, okay? <laughs> that was good to sound just like New England. Uh, Thank you. Hey, hey, come out, because we're going to have a good time. It's the full band. It's going to be great. Um, just uh, call up, start getting your tickets, start getting your good seats, and uh, we're going to have a good time. You Meet know what we're going to do? We're going to yeah. talk like this all night long, just to reminisce. Yeah, so and uh, on the, what time uh, is our guest coming on? Six, oh, 4 30. Oh, okay. So he's cool. got eight minutes, you know. So my uh, time. It's I'm at 4 23. Okay. I'm nervous, y'all got yeah, yeah. kind of famous. Remember how we get with famous people? We gotta be cool. Try and, not to talk each over each other as much. <laughs> well, be as professional as you can. It's hard for us. Always, but okay. even more so then, when they're super famous. Then of course it's Christmas time. Now <laughs> Long before the December 19th show in Tom Ball, Texas, the trio Christmas show is the release of Christmas time by the cow sales. OK, a big holiday release with some good years. And and uh, it's going to be a big to do. It's coming out October 24th. We'll figure out how to scream about that soon, I'm sure. Uh, but we got our little trio Christmas show, December 19th in Tom Ball. And this is an intimate we sure do. What? <laughs> well, it's interesting. because. <laughs> I what? said to Mark Volman, he goes, hey, what are you going to do after this? You know, and I said, oh, we got to we got to show somewhere in Texas. And he says to me, oh, Tom Ball. And yeah, I looked and I, at first I was thinking, you remember that place we played? It was a dinner club and and it was the happy together. It was a dinner club and, uh, and we Not did it Texas. just about. But that wasn't Texas. No, no, no but no, no. at first right. I was thinking, oh, have we already oh, been there? Yeah. So he must have been there sometime in his life because he said it right out. And I go, yeah, that's what we're playing. Be psychic. Yeah. That's interesting. Crazy. Yeah. Usually people All right, what think, other gigs? Come on, because oh, the guy's okay. going to come on. December 19th, January 19th, once again at the at, at the Golden Nugget. So we are have a um, this is they the closest thing. Enough. This they is the closest thing to a residency. Enough. We have a Vegas yeah. residency. It's I knew this was going to happen, okay, y'all. Now we're nervous. Okay? okay, now we're nervous. Everybody cool out. Take a big, deep breath. You know what catches me off guard when their name shows up first? Hi, Paul. Can you hear us, Paul? I sure can. Oh, yes, I yeah. can. Yeah. I don't believe it. Okay, Paul. Now, we got Everybody nervous as soon as we saw your name. Now here's you. All right. So, um, Well, have you really somebody, you sort of summoned them. Um, a meeting of of the cow shows in my honor. Am I correct? Because I yes, yes, we yes we well, did. I am duly honored. Let me say that. <laughs> this is before this we is, even start. We just yeah, got off a good. three month tour, but you know what? Anything for you. Yeah, well, and I we mean, love I'm, pups too. So, well, that's beautiful. And okay. my daughter is full time uh, pup rescuer. Yeah, we know all about that. We're going to get about right into it because. Sorry, you know, Paul, you are so famous. We've all looked you up. We're not going to get into the how famous you are. We're not going to get into it's like go look him up. He's done everything. But we do have a few things after we talk about Victoria and do our ditties for doggies. We do have just a few little personal questions for you after we get it. But we really want to get into that because that's local for me. You know, I can ask Studio Fox and Hound people get down Ventura Boulevard. You know, it's a, it's a week from tomorrow night, and we're going to be talking about this tomorrow night on, and leave it up on the internet. Paul, you want something? Oh, My Paul, I, I just wanted to mention to Paul that I, I'm up here in Oregon. We have a hay farm, and we have horses and chickens and dogs and cats, and they have all been rescue animals. Oh, that's all beautiful. of them <clears throat> needed a home, and we had a farm and land, so we gave them homes. And so you're in Oregon. Oregon now. Yes. Where's everybody else? I know uh, Susan is in 
Uh, New Orleans. That's correct. Yes. I am in New Orleans. I just been Woodland here. Woodland Hills. Bob's Woodland. Woodland Hills, California, oh. in the valley. Well, then I hope, you know, you have plans. You don't have no other plans on September 13th. Unfortunately, I'm going to Rhode Island <laughs> to sing at a memorial for a, a good friend back there, actually. Oh, I'm sure. And I'll I'm send sure. all my friends. But listen, okay, this I'm going to wrangle us. Bob's Council. Let's get official. The logo didn't come in all. I couldn't shrink the picture, but that says pop culture, not pop culture, pop culture. We love this logo. Look at that dog. He's <laughs> super cute. See the logo. Yeah. It's great. And so if you don't mind, if we could get into this first, tell us about Victoria and tell us what she's done for two years and 400. I mean, we know all about this. This is incredible stuff. Well, first of all, you just sneak on the air, right? We're, we're actually recording now. Yes, yeah, we I don't are. Even, I don't even know when you start. You might have started earlier today at breakfast. We we're, did. We've been going. I wouldn't know the, I wouldn't know the difference. Um, but my daughter, Victoria, is, is um, lives in the Hollywood Hills and um, has been, this has been her passion. Um, it, it crept up on me uh, and her, but and she wrote a book about it, too. Her book is called Pop Culture as well. She okay. just became really uh, a, not only a devotee of dogs, but uh, just sort of obsessed and, <laughs> uh, with Good. it. And she she has no kennels, you know. Uh, what this means is that her, she has just taken over her house. It's a dog house. She's got <laughs> four, four of her own, you know, two of them because she just couldn't resist. You know how it is. They keep oh, yes. It. You know, they can't, they can't even give them it. But mainly she gets them fostered, you know, right away. She's got foster families on speed dial. At right. all hours, they come in, they're rescuing them. They may have been left by the side of the road or injured, the mother injured, you know, with a litter of 10 or something. They're, she's got them scheduled in and out all the time. And chances are when they pick them up, they're going to need medical attention. Of course, they've, probably, they've either gotten hit by a car or they've been it's just a bad and they haven't eaten in a week or two. So that's why she needs constant funds. And that's why I'm thrilled to be doing this thing uh, yeah. on the, the 13th of September. And this is uh, at the write off. This is at the write off room, guys, on Ventura Boulevard. Everyone knows the valley. There's no excuse. No excuse. Also, also <laughs> I mean, Jeff Barry. OK. Can we talk about Jeff, if you don't mind, real quick? Okay, let's go. Okay, here's the deal with me and Jeff Barry in my mind. So the Cow Sills, uh, Rain the Park, and other things, Indian Lake and Hair, yeah. Love America Style, and We Can Fly, went top 20. I'm done. Yeah. Jeff Barry, Chapel of Love, Leader of the Pack, Do I Diddy Diddy, Hanky Panky, yeah. Pan, <laughs> Love You Do Do, Run Run, Be My Baby, Take Me Home Tonight, River Deep, Mountain High, Then He Kissed Me, I Want to Be a, a High, Tell Laura I Love Her. <laughs> That's insane. That's a lot of hits. And That's people, Jeff, yeah, Jeff Barry's going to be with Paul uh, at, at this event next Wednesday. Uh, the doors open at six; it's eight to nine thirty. I can't imagine the stories. I'd be. In, are you going to let him ask questions, the audience and stuff? What's yes, going on? yes, yes. Uh, the uh, and everybody. I mean, it's obviously it's going to be kind of an inside crowd. Mm -hmm. Jeff Barry, with his late wife Ellie Greenwich, wrote all of those songs that you just mentioned. And if you Perfect. start, you know, for those of us who revere. A grill building park. And I know Absolutely. you you guys are History. are some of them, you know. History. You are like three and all three A and R men sitting there. Right <laughs> you now, got that you know? right. I know yeah. because I you know I'm with Tony Wine, man. <laughs> I, that, say no more, baby. Say no more. <laughs> um well then I'm gonna tell you that, you know, Tony Wine my, to me her fit my favorite credit of hers is that she was in the Archies. Is that so? Hello, yes. Come yes. In. Well, I see Bob come coming in. This is great. Yes, but he was we, in Archie's, of course. Yes, and then and then what? what well, are you gonna say, Bob? She was the high. Well, guy. yeah, I'm gonna make the last so sleep. Well, besides, you know, singing, writing, can't Handita uh, uh, as she did, and write, you know, the and other Angel of the, love. Was it Angel of the morning, you guys. Uh, groovy no, kind that, of love. Yes, yeah, yeah. Groovy kind groovy of kind love. of love. Groovy kind of love. Awesome. Anyway, we are brill building babies. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 So yeah. um this so is the Jeff Bible. You know, this 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 man wrote the book uh with Ellie and um 
And I met him uh, in 1974. I had just come to wow. the country from uh, Canada. And, oh, you know, I come from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Yes, you uh, do. On the north shore of Lake Superior. Uh, there's a lovely theater up there. Uh, so a lot of our friends have played up there. And they named the street in front of the theater after me. Oh, uh, so, you know, oh. it's funny. Yeah, certainly even the, like the British. I, I played I played your street. Man, they played you straight. Uh, uh, listen, cool. we, we had it's, we had a driveway access road named after us. Uh, yeah, so not that's quite not the quite same a street. Thing, but okay. It's not a street, that's, but it's something. <laughs> that's pretty much what this is, to tell you the truth. Okay. But that, um, that's yeah. for another time. Go ahead. Next Wednesday. Uh, oh, so we were talking about Jeff Barry, though, and the yeah. fact that I met him right after I came to the country. Uh, and a freak thing, I auditioned for a TV pilot that Don Kirshner and Norman Lear were doing together. Both were huge names at the time, 1974. Oh, Kirshner from the Brill Building, you know, although then he came back, had a second career with Don Kirshner's Rock well, Concert. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, and then Norman Lear had, you know, 12 shows going at that time, starting with All in the Family and yeah. going through the Jeffersons and everything else. And these people were going to do a kind of a monkey style show. Uh, uh, in the, but, but in the 70s, about rock performers who sold their souls to the devil. Yeah, uh, famous for a year, right? I, yeah, that sounded good. That was the premise, and it was called the pilot was called Hereafter, made in 1974. Wow. I, a kid named Greg Evigan, was in it. He went on to have a couple of shows, including BJ and the Bear, that he started. Uh, this oh. was his first thing, though. Um, yeah. And every song was going to every show was going to end with a song. And they brought in Jeff Barry, this icon, because Kirshner, you know, this these guys go back and and uh, Jeff produced uh, Sugar Sugar, you know, for the Archies, oh, yeah. for, yeah. for Donnie. Well, we and, you know, we just spent yeah. the summer and, with, with Ron Dante. <laughs> we just spent the yeah. summer with Ron Dante. He was all over. I know, I know. And that's just how I got, you know, I got on the show. Ron was sort of the connection. Yeah. Um, next, next Wednesday, will we see... Paul Schaefer and Jeff Berry on a piano and guitar or something doing anything. Oh. Hey, I'm all those, we're going to do all those songs that you named. No, no uh, way. I want to go. Jeff <laughs> singing them. Well, well you, you know, it's not too late at all. Well, the tickets are online, but you got to buy your tickets online. They're going fast. Uh, <laughs> all those songs. And he's going to tell the stories behind them. Be My Baby, for goodness sake. I still stand up when I hear that. That's the national yeah. anthem for me. still play it. Yeah, I, I, God bless you. I bet you do it great. Oh, Susan sings it great. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, of course she does. Anyway, um, I've known him since then. And, you know, he came in to produce, and he wrote the theme of that pilot back in 74. I've known him since then. He's 85 now. Wow. But talk great. about, talk great. about, story. I mean, he's just as fast and funny as he ever was. This is amazing. Um, so it's going to be all about him. And Ron Dante, our mutual friend, no one's supposed to know this, but he's going to come in and do Sugar Sugar because that, oh, wow. he sang the original, as you know. Oh, yeah. With, with Tony Wine. He sang the rest of it. Oh, we got that story, yeah. Oh, okay. it's so great. Well, uh, did you know that he in, in Ron's mind he was doing Donovan when he yes. sang that? he shared okay. that. Yeah, and then and, I heard and, it. Now, once he right. shares that with you, you hear it. Right, then you can't unhear. Isn't it cool? Yeah. And then cool. you can't unhear it, yes. I'm going to have to yeah. change my flight. Hey, that, listen, so can I just give a few factoids for because you just mentioned tickets are only online. you got to go to per, P-E-R dot splash that dot com for tickets, works. okay? And make sure you go up and get them. They're 50 and 150. And don't bark about the price. You know what this don't is. Don't bark for. about oh, it. No pun intended. Ah, <laughs> uh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> no and the VIP thing. You get to meet Jeff beforehand if you want at a yeah. VIP reception, you know, as they're always. Do they get to meet you? I'll, I'll, yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, I'll be there for, you know, a limited amount of time. No, really, of yeah. course I'll be there. Yeah. Uh, but I, oh, Dad. I, I, am the, I, I am the world's foremost authority on this, on these particular songs. I became best friends, actually, with his late wife, Ellie Greenwich, in New York. And I appeared in her show. She had her own show with all of this music in it. 
And her show is called Leader of the Pack, named right. after uh -huh. one, of the, one of the tunes we're going to be doing. Um, uh, and I played uh, Phil Spector in it. I, and I, and there were a couple of, really, it was just the songs <laughs> that all sounded just like the record. Cool. And a couple of, couple of sketches, like they went out, you know, they were married, Jeff and Ellie. Yeah. They went out, you know, they, they parked the car, but instead of uh, making out, they wrote, my baby does a hanky panky. That was the sort of, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that was kind of what the show was. That um, is incredible. Such a simple So I, you know, I, I know that, you know, and I, I can play these songs, I think, just as well as anybody else, because I just love, love them more than anybody else. So I can't wait to get at them, you know, at 85 and hear some of these backstories. There's still stuff to learn. Oh, this backstory is out there. Yeah, this facts yeah. none of us know yet, even. And and we're all over that. That's what we love to do. All right. So you I, get I do want to mention one thing, Bob. Hang on. I want to mention, yeah, tickets are fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars, but people bring your checkbook. Yeah. Okay. This is a worthwhile oh, yeah. thing. Overpay. Oh, and we're gonna get please. Jeff, you know. Uh Jeff is gonna write out the lyrics to be my baby. Oh, we're gonna maybe, sing along. maybe depending on the you know what what the uh demand you know <laughs> and sign it you know so that's gonna be like an Which item. I that. had a sugar daddy. I'd be Wait a minute, are there are there gonna be auction items? You know, so, so far just this you know okay. lyric uh, you know original lyrics signed by Jeff. Oh cool, man, that's, man. Cool. Uh, that's a pretty big get. <laughs> yeah. well, as you know, uh, I uh, the lyrics of Hanky Panky are immortal, as you know. Yes. And they go, my, my they baby does the hanky panky. My okay. baby does the hanky panky. My baby <laughs> does that. And we're back to the Steve Allen show when he used to <laughs> recite the lyric when, when rock and roll was new. But these guys, you know, he was like at the dawn of rock and roll writing songs like yes. that. Oh, no, and yes. the old uh, TV hosts like, like Mike Douglas and, and Steve Allen would kid these lyrics, you know. But yeah. to us kids, they were like... Uh, the Talmud, you know, now, we studied you know, them like the Bible. Yes, we Here's did. Here's a good sign about Jeff Berry. He wrote Leader of the Pack, but unless yeah. I'm mistaken, he, he also wrote Leader of the Laundromat, right? I think he did, yeah. He uh, was involved with that. I just happened to write, to read that he was involved in that, a parody of his own song, I guess. Yeah. His own song. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good, and good an, on and him. A, and another great studio session by our friend Ron Dante. Yes. Uh, who yes. sang in the, he was a member of the group called the Detergents, of course. Yes, and, yes. yes. The, the parody group and actually became, went on the Dick Clock tour with, as a member of the Detergents and stuff. And we totally remember it. What yeah. a crazy no guy. One, Ron thinks no one remembers the leader of the laundromat. But we do. You are, <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> of course. And you can see it, I think, on YouTube now when they appeared on, and I, I'm, I'm I think they were sitting on big blocks, big children's <laughs> building blocks, uh, yeah, as they sang it. Okay, I, I, I have a, anything else we want to cover? Hey, is Victoria going to be? Culture. Hold on, is Victoria going to be there? And uh, are there any puppies going to be there? Anything? Tell us about that. Yes, to all of that. Yes, to all of that. Look at this uh, building. Right. Victoria's life is puppies, and they'll where she goes, puppies go. <laughs> there will be puppies available there, uh, as there always are. But she's very strict. There'll be, you know, there has to be a home check first, and all the various things she makes the potential uh, doctors go through to make sure they're they're worthy. Yeah, because she oh, loves those incredible. animals. Number one, I mean, Paul. Now, who wrote? Go ahead, Paul. Who, who wrote? Um, and they call it puppy love. <laughs> Paul. Paul Anka wrote that. Isn't oh, so, okay. Oh, we can't get, I know nice we won't be doing that, but <laughs> okay. there's certainly, um, you know, in River Deep Mountain High, the, yeah. with the the one that Jeff and Ellie wrote for uh, Tina Turner. Yeah, who, no, the second yeah. verse, isn't it? When I was a little girl, boy, I had a puppy. The oh, only yeah, dog like I had a rag doll, but yeah. You know, I, yeah, I, I no, no, it's rag doll one verse. And the puppy, puppy is the next. Second. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, a guy who writes Do I Diddy Diddy and Hanky Panky, but also writes those other songs, just his broadness of, of ability to write different kinds, it just blew me away and blows me away. Quite amazing. Well, he, Go ahead, Paul. Well, a quick story. You know, he all, when I worked with him in 74 on that Don Kirshner and Norman Lear thing, 
he had a hit record out at the time, sung by Olivia Newton-John, and it was I Honestly Love You. Yeah. He wrote that lyric yeah. Uh, yeah. with Peter Allen. Uh, you know, so talk about a stretch. Yeah. Uh, no but kidding. He's, he's such a funny guy, though. And I mentioned Greg Evigan, uh, the BJ and the Bear. We were sitting around one day and, and Jeff was kind of putting down the rug. Yeah, I wrote it. Yeah, who care? You know, Olivia, whatever. And I said, Jeff, Greg cries when he hears that record. <laughs> and, Jeff, and Jeff said, my accountant cries every time he hears it. <laughs> that is incredible. So okay. those are the t- time, type of brilliant stories we're going to get into uh, on it's September be 7th, amazing. 13th. Robert yeah, I'll tell you, whoever whoever gets that lyric sheet with Jeff Berry's signature on it is headed right to the Antique Road Show. Uh, be my baby, <laughs> man. Bob, I'm I'm you, we'll have him on as a podcast guest, whoever that person is. Yeah. You know, it could be somebody really famous who who could spend a ton of money to get it, you know? Well, again, like I think, you know, the people that are loyal to this repertoire and grew up, you know, standing at attention when be my baby comes on that's a big one. uh that you know that's the crowd that's going to be there so it's going to be an in, a kind of an inside knowledgeable crowd about so, this era of rock and roll early new york rock and roll so let's yes. wrap up give all the particulars bob so go run it down where when okay. how much this time the whole thing pop culture rescue an la based rescue 400 and listen you hear paul said they go into foster homes but these people deal with long-term replacements so long-term placements and they succeed and that's a good thing the doors open at 6 30 the show's at eight jeff barry paul schaefer two legends, icons you know those words um do what ditties for doggies that's it you go to per dot per dot splash that so much fun dot com online to get tickets Pay the big bucks. Go to the VIP. Meet these great people. I mean, you you and can adopt the puppy. Yeah, that you'll be good and keep forever. Now, and uh, name the puppy after one of Jeff's songs, and then it'll all come full circle. Oh. Yeah. Oh, now let's see. Yeah. Okay, so now oh, this is my do- new dog Panky. I hope you like. Yeah, I love. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Now, okay, can you, so can we keep you for just a couple of minutes? For I'm just having a, a good time. I'm, I'm with the councils. Are you kidding? Okay. okay. This okay, is so, so much fun. Go awesome, ahead. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Bob Council. Okay. Go ahead, Bucket this List This is fantastic. <laughs> um, well, I, I'm going to do one quick question with a one-word answer, then I have my real question. But between singer, actor, author, comedian, and musician, what were you going for in the beginning? Well, uh, uh, you know, sociologist. I went to college. Oh. Take uh-huh. sociology and philosophy. Never. That's what you take when you don't know what the hell you're going to do, really. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. You know, it became I, all of the above. And it, it was just too far fetched uh, in Northern Canada to think you were going to go into the music. But that's what I was dying to do. And in college, I realized I couldn't really do anything else. I'll give it a try, you know. And so, yeah, certainly music was the thing. But I'm glad I you know, developed a little personality too. I had no personality as a kid growing up at all. You know, thank God for the radio and hearing songs like yours, you know. It was a lifeline for me up there, hearing you guys sing. Uh, What what motivated you towards the piano? Oh, my mother being the kind of Jewish mother that said that kid is going to play the piano. You know, if it's the last thing he he does. And, And when I was Six years old, he, she said, that's the time when he can read English, he can start piano lessons, you know, and I did. But as soon as I had a, one lesson, I started real picking out things by ear. Yeah, and you, when yeah, rock yeah. and roll was just hitting at that time. And the songs were so simple at yeah. those early three chords. Man. Yeah, so I learned the three chords just like, you know, a kid would on guitar in his garage. Wow. I learned them on piano and I played those in the left hand and kind of the melody and the right, and I could play all the songs, you know. It was a, sort of like magic for me. Yeah, and it was so nice. cold, you couldn't go out anyway. It was 30 okay. below. <laughs> I have a question. So, we're very yeah. out of sync of our regular format, but because you're so special, we're doing it backwards. So did Paul Schaefer ever have a day job plan? A, I need a real job, or did the parents think you needed a real job? Did you ever have that in mind besides sociology, which is not a real job? Sorry. Well, I, I, you know, I, with the parents, I made the deal that so many kids make. 
give me a year, you know, if I'm starving in a year, I'll go back to school. But I truthfully didn't know what I would do. Maybe, you know, my, my father was a lawyer up in this okay. town of Thunder Bay. It didn't appeal to me, though. Maybe I'm an academic. You know, I could become maybe a sociology professor. Oh, God, I yeah. did kind okay. of dig certain aspects of it. Maybe that's how I would have ended up, probably okay. in, in academia of some sort. Uh, you know, good. my Very next fun. question, I'm, I'm listening to this man, this uh, academia guy, and I'm going to say Artie Fufkin in a minute. You know, oh, I, so one of my hits. No, thank you. This, Paul, this is a factoid that if I say Artie Fufkin and Spinal Tap, people are going, what's he talking about? What's he talking about? But, Paul, I got to tell you, because we all know that movie and the guy, you know, with the volume knob on 12, he needed 12 instead of 10 and all that stuff. Uh, but Artie Fufkin, Paul Schaefer played and i love the name of the record polymer it's a it's a science term okay but it's polymer records a promotion guy and he probably says his name about five times when he enters the <laughs> hotel room and he keeps saying hi i'm already is that paul how do you get a call to be in a movie like that and did you figure out why you're doing it like they might be onto something in this movie well uh okay so tell tell you about the movie as you know it was done by the three guys four really Rob Reiner, the director, and then the three principals in the band, Christopher Guest, who went on to make all the, you know, best in show and all, all these wonderful movies that yeah. are all really improvised, just like Spinal Tap was, Spinal right. Tap being the first. Oh, yeah. um, and the great Mike McKeon, who we remember from Laverne and Shirley. Of course. Uh, um, and Harry and Harry. Shearer, <laughs> who, That's right. Yeah, uh, New Orleans own. Harry Sher. Yeah. How did he become a, a guru of New Orleans? That's what all of his friends are asking. How yeah, you, I don't, I don't if, really know. <laughs> he kind of showed up after Katrina in my my view, Master. He had made an incredible movie called The Great Big Easy or The Big, uh, the Big Not Easy. Yes, about, yes. About the hurricane, which was really incredible. But uh, I don't know how he did. I see well, maybe that, him. yeah. Anyway, you very know, respected cat. Uh, he's I a worked sweet with guy. A, you know, I, I, when I was a piano player and a writer and stuff, of special material and stuff on the first five years of Saturday Night Live. And Harry Shearer was a member of the cast on the fifth season. He was the only guy who was a cast member twice, oh, actually. Man. I think, you know, and between you and me, he got fired both times. <laughs> the first <laughs> time, the, <laughs> the first time he and I worked things together and worked together. And when it came time, he was the bass player in Spinal Tap. When it came, and they kind of developed the story, uh, the four of them, but didn't write any lines, just scene outlines. So you knew what was going to happen. You go into the scene and you just kind of have to make it happen, to say the lines, you know. And at the end of it, Rob would say, you know, Cuddy said, oh, that was good, you know. I'd say, Rob, I broke up. And I, he said, that's okay. You would break up if somebody said that. Let's go again, you know, and that's how yeah. they kind of developed it out of just uh, scene outlines. So Harry sold them on me. That's what I'm getting at. He says, okay. this guy, Paul, I knew them anyway. Yeah. He he could be funny as the local promo man. And somehow so I have Harry, have Harry to thank for that. You were yeah. great. Um, okay. I laugh every time. It's such okay. a funny I thing. have I have this question. So all of our lives, um, of course, we're David Letterman fans. We all watch it. The cow sills have ebbed and flowed throughout our entire careers. Yeah. And of course, there's the high times and the not so high times. And on some of those not so high times, we, when watching the David Letterman show, would hear some pretty amazing, I think it was either, how many times were we mentioned twice? We were in his top where, 10 once and in the introduction once. Yeah. So did he like us or hate us? I'm sure he loved you. Uh, who didn't? I don't think I've ever really discussed you guys okay. personally you with know. him. Okay. No, I, so that I, was I, his own thing. Okay. Honest answer is I don't know. But, you know, well, they were probably wild guests. They may have been good natured jokes. They at were, your, they were, at oh, your expense. Them. We didn't Excuse care. Me. Excuse me. Yeah, Paul. so, you know, yeah. 
I know this. I know these are writers in the room and oh, let's get the cows because I'm sitting there one night and and innocently enough, I'm sitting there and I hear. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man who thought the music business would never be the same since the councils retired, David Letterman. And I'm going, why am I hearing that in my living room? And then I'm like honored to be spoken and smacked around of by course. David Letterman. Well, that's beautiful. There's that's a <laughs> funny club that would have me as a member or whatever. <laughs> well, you know, I was insulted by Don Rickles. And again, oh, what, what a what an honor. What an honor. Yes. Right. He said you you, first time he was on Letterman, he he turned to me and I was surprised he even knew my name. He <laughs> said, oh, wow. Paul. He said, Paul. Have yourself committed. And I'm telling you, talk about an honor to be insulted <laughs> by uh, by the great Don Rickles. So that's how, you know. It is that kind of thing. But it's, it shows that your name, you know, the council shows uh, your icons. It's Otherwise, a you know, you wouldn't be using your name in a, any kind of intro or joke or anything. Yeah. Right. You weren't right. who right. you are. We were kind of a guilty pleasure for some people. So I, I often felt that he, it was probably one of those, like, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I actually think about the councils. Clearly, somebody in that office was. It's fun. It was cool. Yeah. I, was cool. Well, I, you, you're such icons that you, you know, you come in and out of it. You were, yes, I guess you were out of stuff. Not hip for a while. But Not all hip. but all of you, all of a sudden, we put on all your records. And you, you know what? They hold, not only hold up, but they're terrific. Thank you. You know, you. the Thanks. production, the vocals, the production, they're just Thank terrific you. and they're irresistible. They're mm -hmm. like, you know, you can't just listen once. And you, they always sound good on the radio. Thank you. Uh, whatever that is, I don't really remember radio. So I've heard <laughs> it. Man. That it I used miss to it. <laughs> well, who does? This is, this is right. radio now. Paul, were you going right. to ask him? I can't remember. It looked like this is like the question. This is radio now. What were you? This what is, was that question? Well, well, I, 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 I want to make sure Bob asked that question. That is, oh, yeah, is here, dying here's another to be thing. asked. I got another one. I'm so glad to have you here, and I'm, I'm hogging it. I know, but I got to ask you because this is one of my favorite scenes. You know, Saturday Night Live, when Bill Murray's doing Nick the Lounge Singer, and you're at the piano. How, how did you hold it together? <laughs> when he would be that guy. I, you were so good. Everyone was good in that recurring scene right were you thrilled to be at the piano during that yeah because he was so funny and um <laughs> there was a group of about five writers and, and i was one of them who would work on those things yeah um but he always came up with the ideas for the songs because he knew what he was going to be able to do okay. well you know like when he sang star wars that was just him <laughs> you know a lot of us contributed to the lyrics oh, but oh, oh, what about the do you the nat geo song look at that old man he is picking up a fossil was that a uh, bill moment no i can't remember this it was National. in one of his movies he's driving oh. along. he's singing oh, we're with nick the lounge singer on saturday night Live. So you're all over the place susan <laughs> yeah i wasn't you know i didn't have the pleasure of working I'm on free that flowing man i thought we were talking i, I did a little where i did was when he made stripes though I was around. Oh, yeah, really? oh, that's uh, good. You are not going to be held to know about Bill Murray. Moving right All right. Away. Go, Bob. Anyway, he know? was like awfully he funny it. in that. And it was a character that he had been doing for years, even before Saturday Night Live, that I heard about from his older brother, oh, Brian, wow. who I met first in Canada. And Brian said, you got to meet my brother, Bill. You'd like him. He, he does this funny thing. Do you remember? I bet you guys remember um, uh, Alan and Rossi. Of course, oh, yeah. yeah. The comedy team. Of course, well, you don't you don't get to talk to many people who do, but it was a funny duo, comedy duo, with a kind of a handsome, uh, though albeit a little greasy, singer who came out and opened with a song, and yes. then Marty Allen, the crazy monkey, yeah. would come out uh, with hair out to here. Aaron Sullivan and, all the time. Yeah, he had the hair. I had to. Uh, I had to sing a song to Marty Allen and pinch his cheek and be that gal <laughs> with Marty Allen. He was no <laughs> Dean Martin. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> what show were you, were you on when you I think did it was that? Mike Douglas. Oh, it was yes. Mike, Mike Douglas. Is that right, Polly? Yeah, yeah, my Polly. Yeah. yeah okay. It was Mike Douglas. That was so carry on. Alan well, and Ross. Hilarious. Well, well, well what's that, what song did you sing to Marty Allen? Uh, I think it was Sweet Talking Guy. Was Or was it Marty Allen and Mel Torme and like 700 other dudes? That I made no, it was on there. Yep. Okay. Oh, my God. And Mel Torme, yeah, the Velvet Funk. 
So yeah. you really, you you traded licks with the Velvet Five. I guess so. That's yeah. pretty no, hard. Me. This girl sat in Dean Martin's lap and they sang something, some standard. Well, on Harvest Moon. He was one Harvest of the, Moon. Yeah, Harvest the Moon. nicest gentlemen I ever met. We sang but anyway, we digress. We got Paul Schaefer. Let's move That's here. Show best. I, I could, you could be on my show, though. I would interview you about all these moments. Well, oh, you may have. Now, talk Let's about rock and roll history. We know uh, about uh, you so, and your little 60-second yes. nuggets of wonder that you put yeah, out. Yeah, give us a call. We'll come on over. I okay. have one more question, and it's my last question. Okay. Okay, good. It's a yes or no. Did you honestly not return Jerry Seinfeld's phone call being considered to be George Costanza? Well, it, it wasn't exactly George Costanza, but I sure did get get a call. And it said, uh, Jerry Seinfeld is, is getting a show, his own show. He was a guy who had been on Letterman a lot doing yeah. stand-up. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and they want you to be a side, his sidekick. So they didn't mention that there were going to be other p three other people in an apartment, or just he, he wants you to be a psychic. It didn't oh, seem like yeah. I had to read for it or anything. Just you know, but I was just overwhelmed with correspondence. I had no help at the time in the office, and I had messages pile on up, and it just <laughs> said, you know, what Letterman was life. <laughs> well, let him, yeah, Letterman was just you know hot and. And I just said, what kind of show could Jerry Seinfeld possibly have? And wow. I no, I and I know I never returned the call. And you know, maybe the it's stupidest true, thing, any, stupidest thing anybody's ever done. No, no, that's a I great know. story, though. And and so the world's most dangerous band. You're 11 years, 82 to whatever, 93 on Letterman. But in '84, yeah. you're going to be in. You're going to be in the Honey Drippers with Robert Plant, and on a number one hit, "See of Love." What did you have license to just kind of go off and do stuff during your? Well, of course, I wasn't exclusive. Okay, yeah. in any way uh, to the show, except I mean, I you know I owe them the courtesy of telling them if I was going to go do, you know, Johnny Carson or something. That was the era that it was. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, but I was doing work, studio work, you know, at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I was getting a lot more of calls because I was on television, even being on Saturday Night Live, you know, yeah. I would get calls to do stuff. And this was just a call through the service Love it. that a studio musician, you know, studio musicians rate registry was called uh, okay. two yeah, days, Saturday and Sunday, Robert Plant. You know, two to four, four, two to you know, three hours or something. Double scale, I hope. Uh, I hope so too. Remember that uh, day, double, triple, single, leader, all that crap. Still, love, I still live in that. You know, oh, yes. is that still there? <laughs> hardly, hardly. Those those dates have disappeared. But yeah, you know, say Wadi gets double scale. Woo. <laughs> yes, that's Wadi. right. And we had a guy, you know, Tom Scott. We remember him. Oh, you know, sure. Absolutely. And he made that record with uh, Joni Mitchell. That Joni Mitchell record. And in the Blues Brothers in the 70s, which I was a part of, he was Tom oh, We're going to thank you for that. We're going to thank yeah, you for that gonna, music. Yeah. Triple Scale Scott, we call him. Triple Scale. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. I, those, I just love phrases that make think, me feel like I'm nine I years think old. Of Jerry Seinfeld. I bet he was looking for Artie Fufkin. I bet that's what he had in mind. <laughs> just thinking about this out loud. Okay. I'm just thinking out loud. Hey, I could uh, see Artie uh, being annoyingly down the hall. Sure. Why not? <laughs> all right. Hey, I don't know. Let, let's uh, bring I, people. Go ahead. No, I want to see where you want to be. Keep uh, bring it full control. circle. But, yeah, bring it full, full circle. circle. Get yeah, back do to it, it, Bob. Well, as you can get back to why we're here, let this man go have dinner, you know, for crying out loud. Um, okay. So remember, guys, a week from, well, I won't say a week from tonight. A week from, this, yeah, but it's We'll be on the internet tomorrow night with this. It's going to stay up on demand. All week we're going to pound this, okay? Goes up tomorrow. It's, it's Wednesday the 13th of September. Of September. Oh, this coming Wednesday, you see it coming when you hear this, at the write-off room Ventura Boulevard, you know where it is. It's in Studio City, 11502 Ventura Boulevard. I got all the info. Per.splashbat.com is the only place you can get tickets. And just go in, pay the big bucks, give them extra for the puppies. It's do wad ditties for doggies. That's a little fun term. And uh, the clue to why <laughs> oh, I call that is I Jeff Barry. 
Jeff Berry is the clue to do our duties for doggies. Go research that, people, and show up Thursday night, whoever, uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, whoever has the answer. Well, just buy the VIP and bring that answer. And you can get a signed copy of Be My Baby lyric sheet, which is. Maybe if you're the guy be, with the big buck. That's going to be fine. That's right. right. That's a frame. That's right. right. Yeah, I can't thank you guys enough. Jeff Berry and Paul you. Schaefer. Thank you for having me. Thank and you for, for having us. This is all my, my, I wish you all could be there um, yes. because oh. it really is up your alley. We would, um, it is. But, you know, for those of people who love the Brill Building sound, this guy, you know, and we're, we're losing our grace so, so Ooh, fast, no kidding, you know. Man. So, my yep. goodness, he's one of the last, you know, people that can tell you from, straight from the horse's mouth what it was like to, to write Meter of the Pack and have the Shangri-La sing it and stuff. It's going to be yeah, a hell of an true. evening. This, this uh, is a very special evening. It's got so, it's so eclectic. Paul Schaefer, Jeff Berry have become historians and they're important because they're here and they can still tell us what went on because guess what, yep. folks? They were there. Yeah, man. We love well, that. You too. You guys too. So thanks for having we're me. All there. Thank you, Thank Paul, you Paul Schaefer. Schaefer. You're a wonderful man. We love you, Paul. We'll yeah, see we you love out you. there. Love you guys too. Big Bye, fans. Okay. Since the old days. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.